You are listening to I Am Refocused Radio with your host, Shamaya Reed. This show is designed to inspire you to live your purpose and regain your focus. And now, here's your host, Shamaya Reed. Hey, welcome to I Am Refocused Radio. We are here once again, and today we have another exclusive for y'all. We're going to be talking to another music. Oh, let me start over. <laughs> it's been a long day. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go officially in three, two, one. Hey, welcome to I and Refocus Radio. We are here once again, and today we have another special guest. We're going to talk to another music artist. We're going to be talking to Rose Starring. Man, she's from, she was based in Nashville, Tennessee, and born in Kansas City, Missouri, and raised in Marco, Marco Island, Florida. And she's a songwriter, a singer, she's a musician. She's going to be talking about us, about her life, but also about her amazing project that's going to be dropping May 27th. And it's called Stages of Grief. So without further ado, I want to welcome Rose, which is a cool name, to the show. And say, how are you doing? I'm good. How are you? All as well, all as well. Before we get too deep into the music stuff, man, tell the audience a little bit about yourself. Well, I'm a singer-songwriter who's been doing music for as long as I could. I just like started picking out songs on my keyboard and that's when I actually got like, you know, lessons and stuff. <laughs> but um I'm living here in Nashville now. Um I've kind of lived all over, but I think that and like the collective of my like experiences leads to an interesting songwriting um, landscape. <laughs> and in your bio, it said that you attended three different colleges in four and a half years. Why? Yeah, I did. Like, I want to know why. <laughs> and and how did that, how did that happen? So when I first um, decided which college to go to, like right off the bat, I knew I wanted to go but I wasn't completely sure where was the right fit for me. And I was dating someone at the time and <laughs> toured a college with them. And we decided that we liked it. So that was great while it lasted. But then I decided to transfer to the college I actually wanted to go to, which was FSU. But I kept trying to major in music there and it kept not working out. And by chance, I heard of MTSU and I took the leap of faith again and moved here closer to the Nashville area because I really had nothing to lose at that point. And I was like, sure, why not? And you go. And your- yeah, barely thought that I was going to get the degree anyway, but I was like, I guess I'm going to do this. I'm halfway there. <laughs> and I and did the thing. <laughs> and you got your bachelor's in recording industry and. Tell us a little bit about that, man. What was some of the cool stuff you studied in that program? Oh, that program was so awesome. We basically had um, some classes where you would get um, fundamentals on, like, certain instruments. Uh, Some classes where you got to actually collaborate with your other, like, student songwriters. So you would co-write all the time, and it really helped prepare you for that like experience in the actual music industry which is very interesting and just a lot of like music history and like recording industry fundamental stuff that's important to know so you don't get taken advantage of in prior college was was music something that that you really wanted to pursue as a professional career I mean what what was your age when you say you know what this is something that I think I kind of want to do It was always something that was in the back of my head, but I didn't know how to make it a career in a, like, financially possible way besides being a teacher. So for a while, I kind of just wrote it off. Um, But once I went to college and started uh, trying to study other majors, I was like, this isn't right. Like, music is always in the back of my head. So... It was kind of something I had to come around to accepting, like, this is the only thing I want to do. <laughs> and what? how would you describe the style of your music and, and your genre? And 
how has that helped shape your up and coming project that's coming out May 27th? I'm really inspired by a lot of the pop music that I grew up with. So um, as soon as Lana Del Rey came out, she was like my one and only for a long time. But I also grew up just listening to like the pop girls like Britney and even like other smaller little branches off from them and I was always just really inspired by like that campy fun like music (laughs) but really like Lana Del Rey and Billie Eilish uh, have become like some of my biggest styles like I model after and when you were in college when you were studying for the program for recording industry at MTSU did you find some mentors or other uh, classmates that you collab with or got creative with? What was that experience like? It was really amazing. Like up until the pandemic happened, there was such a sense of like community and um, like a shared just like passion for music there. So I really connected with like so many of my classmates who now um, one of them has already gotten a record deal. She's amazing. And there's still a lot of my classmates that I like to like songwrite with and stuff. So it's great. Like the community I got from it. And when you started working on, on this project, Stages of Grief, tell us about this and uh, what inspired you to create this project? So Stages of Grief came about because I was still in college. I was going full-time, but also working full-time with my collective hours between like two jobs. So I had been dating someone for almost a year and out of the blue that like ended, but I didn't have time to process it because all of my free time, I was just work, school, work, school. So the small amount of free time that I did have, I've always coped with music anyway. So I had the idea to just channel it into songwriting so I could just kind of get it all out in a healthy way. And when you see the process of you growing as an artist, you're on this music journey and... There's so many artists out there. I mean, it's it's not oversaturated. Well, you could say that, but I'm going to say it's not oversaturated mm-hmm. because everyone's uniquely different in their own, you know, style. Mm-hmm. How have you learned to find your sound? And what was that process like of you staying true to who you are as an artist? It's always a challenge, like, listening to everything new and and absorbing so much and then trying to figure out what your own unique voice is. But um, I always try to just write from the heart about my own experiences. Um, That way it, it always comes out as like genuinely from my voice and not like I'm just creating like uh, radio music or, anything like that not that that's a bad thing but I really um kind of use it as my diary (laughs) and speaking of that I mean that's that's just real that's where the real stuff is that's life Mm -hmm. that's how people connect to you when when someone's listening to your music especially the one that's coming out um stages of grief what are you hoping that people who listen to your work that they take from I'm hoping that throughout all the vulnerable, you know, release of emotions that's held within the EP, I hope that the underlying message from it is kind of that there is always something to take from a bad situation and you're never completely left like without anything because there's always the chance to rebuild and you make art from it and, you know, life goes on. (laughs) So I I guess finding the silver lining in every cloud is kind of the message I'm trying to give. 
And as far as branding yourself and marketing, you have a YouTube channel also where people can watch, you know, videos. You have a music video. You have other lyric videos and stuff. What are some of the things that you learn in the side of this video side of visually putting your music out there in that market? I've definitely noticed recently that everything's becoming more visual oriented, even though music is such a, like, an audio based art form, everyone still wants visuals for everything, even um, if it's a single. So I started to realize the importance of giving everything an accompanying visual, whether it's like a lyric video or a boomerang, like the new um, Spotify canvases. Hmm. People like to have something to visualize what they're hearing. So it's been interesting to like figure out uh, what visuals I want to accompany my music. It's really cool. And once again, listen to I Am Refocus Radio. We're talking to Rose Starring, and she based, she is based in Nashville, Tennessee, talking about her music career. And also, if you want to go to her website, is rosestarring.com. Again, that's rosestarring.com. People have been excited about things getting better with chances of the future. People hopefully getting closer to the time where we can go to concerts and people are getting vaccines with with the COVID-19 stuff and the pandemic is still active, but we are, you know, taking safety precautions. What excites you the most with the idea that soon one day we'll be able to go back to concerts and enjoying music like we used to have been doing? I'm definitely so excited to be on both sides of the stage again. Like, I'm, I think I'm equally looking forward to being the person attending the show and the person playing live shows again. But it's such a unique way to connect to people that it's just hard to replicate online. So I'm really looking forward to that. And someone listening right now and they're like, man, I want to be a music artist. I want to do what Rose is doing. What do you say to someone who just gets started? And they're like, all right, what is what's the crucial steps I should take as a new artist? And based on your experience, what do you think are some of those fundamental steps a new artist can take when it comes to getting to, getting to the music industry? I think the best thing to get used to doing is like really putting yourself out there because I've always um, written music, not always, but since I was 17, but it took me a while to be comfortable like releasing things on a platform because you get this sense like, oh, this could be better and you start to become a perfectionist, but no one is going to know that you exist if you don't let go and release your stuff into the world and then then people can watch you grow so don't be afraid of not being good enough yet because you will learn as you go (laughs) and as far as you as an artist making these moves doing big things if you had opportunity to work with anybody in the world i like asking this question because it's always interesting who Mm. would you want to work with And why? If they were listening to this right now and say, you know what, I'm going to call in the next 24 hours, who would you want calling you? I think I'm honestly so excited about, um, oh, I have two answers. (laughs) But um, Olivia Rodrigo's newest album that came out today was just insane. I would love to like write with her. Or Haley Williams has been absolutely killing it for so long. So there are so many talented women I would die to work with. <laughs> and as far as as far as Tennessee, I'm going back to Tennessee real quick. Mm-hmm. What? Because I, I never, I don't think I ever been there. I need I need to make a trip to Tennessee. But what is the music scene really like when you're there as a person? Because we all get a glimpse. Because you know the famous New Yorks and L.A. and you know Nashville. But you're there, you know, so you you got the real deal, the real scoop. 
what is it really like? What is that experience uh, like being around all that great talent in Nashville? It's wild. You know, it's inspiring. And that's part of the reason I wanted to come here is that you really could go out in Nashville like any day of the week and find someone playing who is extremely talented and could sign a record deal like that night. So it really keeps you on your toes. You're always like, oh man, I need to be doing the absolute best I can do in order to compete with all of these crazy talented people. So it's awesome to see up close. And when when you see the opportunities that are going on right now in the industry, people always joke that the industry is always forever changing. Mm-hmm. What are some of the trends that you're seeing right now that you think you really like it or not so much? That's a good question. Um, I really, I like the trend of like, the female singer songwriter is like really coming back around and just this like really honest emotional music is making its way into like the mainstream. And I'm like, this is really cool. Like let's all be honest and vulnerable about our emotions. Like that's what I'm all about. (laughs) Um, I think the, the thing that always kind of is funny to me is like, just very stereotypical, like very talented Nashville songwriters, but writing like very radio friendly songs. It's interesting to hear because I think about like the business side of it, but I'm not against it because <laughs> mm-hmm. I understand why they do it. Once again, we're talking to the one and only Rose starring. If you want to learn all about what she's doing and stay updated to what she's releasing, go to her website, rosestarring.com and Let's talk more before we let you go about May 27th because your new EP, Stages of Grief, is coming out on May 27th. What are you looking forward to once once this thing is out? And are there going to be any music videos or any visuals following up after the release? I am most looking forward to finally getting this these songs off of my chest like in a way it's a big emotional release as well so I'm so excited to share it with the world and see who can relate because you always kind of feel like alone in your problems until I've put out songs that I'm like oh no one could relate to this and then (laughs) a lot of people that I never would have expected to can connect to it so it's really cool I look forward to that and filming music videos for it which I think I'm going to try and do two or three because that seems like a a fun idea and a good investment. And someone checks out your project and they fall in love with it. What if someone wants to collab with you? What's the best way a producer, a singer, songwriter, a musician? What's the best way? Do they have to go through a lot of red tape or what's the best way they can actually pitch idea to you? Oh, I feel like I'm super, like, reachable. Like, anytime someone um, even, like, DMs me on Instagram and is like, can I send you a beat? I'm like, yeah, here's my email. So I think just, like, you know, reach out to me however you want. Email, Instagram DM. And if I see it, I'll definitely be open. I love to um, collaborate with people because you get to make stuff you never could have made with your just your own brain. Well, y'all, y'all heard it first, man. Y'all, y'all better start sending those emails, man. And <laughs> and what's amazing about music is I, I just talked to someone this morning. Uh, just, I think I just released an interview today, too, later today. Um, it's been a long day, I'm sorry. But, yeah, I, I interviewed someone this morning, and they was just talking about the whole concept of the fact when you collaborate with other people, it, it allows your mind to stay open and stay ready for a new perspective. What's your take on that? And while we have time left, why is that so important to have that community feel in the industry trying to learn from other great talents? Yeah, I totally agree with that. Like, if I ever get writer's block, I can always call up a friend to write with, and it's awesome. It'll break you right out, and just at least you can exchange ideas and look at the world from a different perspective, which I think that's the important part is um 
being a musician is a very isolating career sometimes and connecting with your community within like the music industry is so important because we have to have each other's backs like mental health wise career wise we're the only ones who really know what we're going through so we got to stick together and those listening right now, I am Refocus Radio. We're talking to Rose. That's a dope name. I'm going to say again, Rose <laughs> Starring. What would you like to tell to your new listeners and just what will you want your legacy to be when, when it's all said and done? I would like to tell them that I love you. No, <laughs> um, no that's cool. Yeah. They're going to love you back. They're going, hey, they're going to go buy those (laughs) tickets and go to the concert, man. That's all good. Yeah, exactly. But honestly, I hope that the message that I give off is basically just be you, embody your life and your experiences authentically because you're the only one who's going to be able to do that. And we've only got one shot at this. So it's going to be an uphill battle if you don't just do you. But <laughs> I almost thought he was going I, to sing the climb or something. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and and definitely use the climb as inspirational reference as well. That would be my advice. But you know, she's right. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. That's true. But once again, man, true honor having Rose starring on the show. I am Focus Radio. Like I said, the the important date you want to make sure you don't forget is May 27th. She's going to have her new EP, Stages of Grief. And go to the website uh, when it's safe to drive. Or if you're just at home chilling, you can write this down. It is rosestarring.com. Again, that's rosestarring.com. I want to thank you, Rose, for being on the show today. And what you want to say before we check out? Well, thank you so much for having me. And I just can't wait to share the EP with all of you. Boom. There you go. That is, once again, rosestarring.com, May 27th. Don't forget it. The new EP, Stages of Grief, the one and only Rose Starring. Like we say on every single show, keep God first, stay focused, and peace. Peace.